I'm Mitten Bryant. Uh, I work for DeepKey. I'm uh, DeepKey's uh, CEO and co-founder. And uh, DeepKey is a 400 employee uh, SaaS company whose job is to help uh, real estate players uh, transition towards net zero and sustainability uh, thanks to uh, AI and uh, thanks to ESG. Actually, it comes from all these parts uh, simultaneously with different levels of, of maturity, obviously, but we can sum things up that way. First thing first is compliance, regulation, and there are more and more regulation in Europe. You obviously have EU taxonomy, SFDR, CSRD. You have more local regulation in uh, Asia or in the US, such as LL97, for instance. Uh, but it's clearly one point because people don't want to, uh, you know, uh, supply the market with non-compliant uh, assets. Uh, so the uh, asset managers, investment management companies, they tend to uh, improve their assets in order to be uh, compliant. The second uh, point is access to capital. And so on that matter, clearly lenders uh, play a great role. Uh, and especially in Europe, you see more and more lenders uh, offering and accommodating uh, uh, clients with uh, new loans, but with more and more constraints, more and more demanding criteria. Uh, and you can see some uh, lenders that are are no longer willing to give any loan if they don't get, get access to data and if they don't have commitments from their clients to improve uh, assets from a carbon uh, standpoint. The third point is clearly the attractiveness of the asset. And you, you see also more and more tenants that are willing uh, to uh, uh, have amazing buildings in CBD, in amazing locations with a, a lot of services, but also that want to retain their talents, they want to retain their employees to attract uh, customers and they want uh, ESG compliant and uh, a climate positive building. And to do such a thing, they ask their landlords to offer uh, these amazing buildings. And it's more and more the case, even though obviously it's not all the tenants uh, yet. And the last but not the least is um, the investors, the LP, that are very happy to offer uh, investment companies money to in be invested into assets, but they don't want to lose money. And uh, we see more and more brand discounting uh, happening, especially in Europe. Uh, and in addition to the already existing real estate crisis, you don't want uh, to sell an asset uh, half of its price or two-thirds of its price because you forget to refurbish it from a climate change standpoint. The first thing first, 80% uh, of 2050 a global building stock already exists. So most of the efforts uh, we need to do in order to decarbonize the real estate industry come from existing buildings. We recently, a few months ago, uh, run a survey uh, amongst 250 institu institutional investors in six countries in Europe. And one of the great insights we've got from uh, this survey is that 88% of the investment uh, companies already plan to invest capex into buildings. And they think that they think that 42% of the asset requires immediate or in the very uh, near future uh, refurbishment uh, in, in order to avoid all the constraints we mentioned. Saying that, it's interesting to see that uh, they declare that the most um, um, urgent assets to refurbish are retail first, and it was 30% of them uh, thinking about retail first, then it's industrial assets, and then uh, it's offices. I have three good news for you and three bad ones. The three good news is we already have enough money. Uh, the investors, the lenders, they are ready to invest into good assets and good refurbishment. The second good news is we have enough assets, the 42% already mentioned. And the third good news is we have the technology. Uh, we have the data, we have software, uh, we have now more and more AI. We also have hardware, we have equipment, devices, and best practices to implement to make it happen. The bad news is, first, uh, we have a shortage in uh, uh, supplying these equipments, especially when they are built uh, in Asia uh, and not uh, in Europe, for instance. Second, we have a shortage of staff, skillful people, workers, to refurbish a uh, building. And the last but not the least is we still have uh, a low level of maturity from the market. You know, what's happening right now with decarbonization is very similar to what happened 20 years ago when real estate industry became a financial industry. We started implementing ERP, uh, we started having FPNA teams, auditors looking at reporting every quarter, every year, etc. And we stopped talking about building and started talking about assets. We need to do the same 
not with dollars and euros it's already been done, but with CO2. And this is uh, the three things that are required to make it happen. You know, AI is very trendy. We started 10 years ago at DeepKey, and from day one, we used uh, machine learning algorithm, we use data scientists, big data algorithm, and now we call them artificial intelligence, and it's different uh, uh, versions and, and different uh, type of uh, algorithms, obviously. But as long as you have a practical use case, I'm talking about boots on the ground use case, uh, if it's a small and uh, useful use case that, that provides value you know, data enrichment, time saved, more insights, and it's not too expensive and it doesn't have a too big impact on the environment because AI is very not a good thing from an environmental standpoint, then it makes sense. In our case at DeepKey, we use a lot of uh, these use cases, already 45, such as uh, uh, thanks to a satellite in, uh, the photo, uh, we are able to tell automatically what is the nature of the roof. Uh, do you have you know, grass, uh, do you have uh, technical stuff, uh, do you have rail tiles, etc. And it's very useful for us. It's a small use case, but we can do it now completely automatically. Another example is we uh, are connected to 2 million meters in 65 countries. There is no way for human beings to look at the screen and try to figure out if there is a water leak or an issue with energy consumption. We do that automatically thanks to what we call interval data, pattern recognition based algorithms that detect faults and send notification to the right person in charge of the building. So this is amazing use case you can have, but again, you need to think about practical use case, not too expensive and look at the environmental impact.